Lisbeth. I'm the founder of Nordic Dog Trainer and I am in Norway just outside Oslo. Today I'm going to talk about training matters. I'm actually going to tell a couple of stories or examples. So today I want to talk about uh, what we call the attention sound and the recall. And I'm just going to, uh, this is not a lecture as such, I'm just going to give you three examples from my life with my dogs on when and how I used recall or maybe I even used something else, I will explain later, and the attention sound. So, so the attention sound is obviously a sound, it's not a word. I use this sound, this kind of sound, and I train my dogs. This is the first thing they get to learn when they come to my house, even if they are a puppy or an adult dog. Um, so this sound means I, you know, I am talking to you. I want your attention. That's why we call it the attention sound. So we want the dog's attention. We don't need to have the dog look or stare in our eyes. Absolutely not. That is not the point of this. Um, and I'm not asking my dogs to do that, to have the eye contact. But I just want them to turn around and look in my direction so that I can now give them the message I want to give. And that message could be either something I'm doing with my body language or, um, or a cue, or I, I tell them something. I don't really have cues as such. Um, so I, I just talk normal to my dogs, like let's go here or let's do this. I know I am fully aware they don't speak Norwegian or any verbal language as such, but I still I talk to them like that so they can see what I'm doing. That's what dogs do. Yeah? They use their sight. They are very good at reading the, our body language. And our body language is very clear. It's very clear and it can be very misunderstood by dogs as well. Something else we talk a lot about in level one. So they know that um, the attention sound means that something is happening. So uh, I can use it in, in different instances like when we're out walking, I want to cross the road, I have a long leash and Wilma is walking and then I I do the con the uh, attention sound and then she turns around she she sees me turning because I want to cross the street for example then I'm crossing the street okay um so I used the attention sound uh, yesterday to uh, a big surprise it worked sometimes I, I get very surprised on in what situations it works um because you wouldn't believe it i wouldn't believe it <laughs> we were i am here in norway living really literally in the in the forest with literally no neighbors or very few and they're not i can't even see the neighbor's house so um okay let me turn the camera around again i think that I did that before as well so this is this is what it looks like okay this is beautiful forest colors in the Norwegian woods at the moment. So the weather was nice and beautiful and Wilma, me and my cat, uh, we, we, the cat is very often coming with us as well. So we were basically just hanging out in the forest, very close to the house because we were on our way home and then and this is what happens. Maybe some of you uh, have the same experiences, but um, uh, suddenly there was a, a huge and I, I and because I get really uh, fascinated by the size of the moose, the elk. I don't re never know if we use elk or moose right. It's different between American moose and Norwegian. Uh, sorry, European. But they are huge, bigger than horses. So this moose 
was suddenly, um, I mean, not that suddenly, it's a moose, come on. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you can kind of hear that something is going on. That's my point. I heard because I have developed kind of a superwoman sight and hearing when I'm out walking because I'm used to having a lot of dogs. Some of them were uh, anxious and, you know, I I've been doing a lot of training or practicing things when I walk my dog. So I'm used to trying to be in control of the environment we're in. So when I hear that a branch is, you know, when I hear a sound and also in the woods, in the forest, like a branch is uh, what you call it, like, you know, someone walking on a branch or it could also be birds. So you hear a lot of uh, noises in the woods. So I heard this branch and I didn't see the moose then. I heard the the branch. Some 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 something was stepping on to a branch. And then immediately by default, this is now something I automatically do because my instinct or something in me told me that this was not a bird and this has happened before. It's not like you know it's the first time. So I then did the attention sound. Because Wilma was uh, off leash, and uh, but she wasn't very far away from me. So my point is that I did the attention sound, this one, just before we could actually see the moose. And the moose was very close, fascinating close. And it was kind of running, like, beautiful, elegantly. I don't know if you've been fortunate to see moose when they are... Um, running or walking they're so elegant these animals they have this long long legs they, they're really 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 beautiful um so it was kind of dancing you know in front of us and just running a little bit um to the other side of of the what is it called yeah where we were um where we were walking and it was very very close um unusually close i would say i could see the eyes as well the the moose was you know they're scared of people as we are and now uh we have hunt the hunting season as well so they are very scared of people poor thing but they also get a bit um like all animals if they feel threatened you know it's a bit dangerous but it wasn't feeling threatened so i didn't feel in danger the thing is, I have a Basset Hound with a very well-developed nose. So I'm sure that um, that Wilma was sensing that there was something going on, but it wasn't important for her. It was more important to smell what she was smelling at the moment. But because I don't use the attention sound very often, when I do, then she gets like, whoa, what's happening? You know, so she immediately looks up and she looks at me and then i tell her come here wilma please come here so i could put the leash on because i wanted to put the leash on because i didn't know where the moose were going if it was going you know towards my house sometimes they're actually right outside my house so i wanted to have the leash on the cat though <laughs> i think it was so i love observing so the cat was sitting down totally like in awe it's like wow what a big animal and we actually uh, walked a different route yesterday as well we walked somewhere in the woods where we normally don't walk very often but the cat insisted on coming with us and she's extremely cautious like you know cats are amazing animals as well so she was all the time she wanted to come with us she had the option of course to go back home or to just you know wait until we were back but she she was being very cautious the whole walk we had so uh when she saw that moose she was like wow <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> um what i uh, talking about moose you know when i uh, i was here i actually lived in this house in the south 14 years ago i worked close by so i lived here for a while and i had uh, many dogs and then i had three italian greyhounds and they the problem with them was that they would jump before I fixed and managed the, the veranda. I don't know if you can see it. Did some... 
can you see outside on my veranda now i've taken it away i'm sorry about the the garage i'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing some some renovating here so um okay so these things um i don't know what you call them but in the summer i have uh, glass in them glass or fabric so you can't jump over that and we needed to do something about it because the um the uh, greyhounds were jumping and they did that when we had moose when there were moose here right outside literally they could walk you know next to my car they walked around here so that's not a good thing when you have italian greyhounds or any dogs jumping the ship <laughs> and going out to scare the moose away mm, not a good idea okay so the whole point with the attention sound is to use it before your dog reacts that's kind of the point with all behavior we want to if you want to avoid something from from happening uh, prevent something from happening we have to take action before it actually happens. If Wilma saw the moose and decided to start chase, chase, chasing the moose, I can't see her doing that. I've never seen her do that. She's not that kind of, you know, dog first of all and personality. So she wouldn't start chasing and running the moose, but she would very well be very interested in the smell. And then she, you know, uh, goes very fast, but not to chase the moose. So um uh, you have to be aware of what's going on in, around you at all times walking in the forest or walking uh, on the streets but if you use and that attention sound i use it for everything i, I talked about it before as well i prevent uh, vilma from chasing the cat inside i uh, yeah for everything i want to avoid or when i want to you know, give them some information about something important when we're out and about or inside. I use the attention sound. Okay. Um, that was the first example. Two more to go. Just, I wrote it down here, so that's why I'm reading my notes. So one time... So some, sometimes uh, the students are asking us, okay, so is attention sound the same thing as recall? But no, it's not. Recall is a recall. It's something that you can train, you know, to ask your dog to come back to you. And we, recall is typically at a longer distance. So you have to say something. Or you can, of course, whistle or use a whistle. Um, but this sound, the attention sound, is this and of course, if the dog is far away from you, well, they have good hearing, but it's very likely that they're not able to notice that little, that very soft sound far away. So uh, uh, you, you can train recall. We, we of course, um, uh, recommend training recalls for safety of our dogs. Um, but um more importantly i want to tell you a, a funny story again about wilma again about walking in the woods this is where i lived before so it wasn't right here uh we were walking in the woods there, i had five dogs at the time and i was in a hurry i had, had to go to work um so i was just uh, going for a little walk before i took the dogs with me to work and um yeah so then I could see that Wilma, <laughs> Wilma, it's something with bassets. This is the fourth basset I have. So it's not new to me that they like, especially well, they love to, to roll around in a fox poo or any kind of poo they find uh, in the forest, luckily from other animals. Um, I prefer that, to be honest. So... At this time, this I really didn't want her to roll around in fox poo. I didn't have time to go home and um, and uh, shower her. 
So I, I kind of became desperate. Again, they were all off leash. And I saw, because I saw the way her very determined walked up um, in the woods, like walked up a little bit uphill. And I could just see by her behavior what was going to happen. Oh, she found this loving fox moose again. And, you know, she started with her head going a little bit like this on the ground. And I thought, shit. So I thought, what do I do now? Of course, the attention sound for this kind of situation would not work because I had to find something that would be more interesting than the fox poo. And for Wilma, fox poo is great. She loves it. She loves to roll around in it. So you have to find something that is more exciting. And I'm so proud of myself, even today. And I was, when, because what I just instantly or just quickly remembered, because I was thinking, well, shit, what do I do now? I don't want her to roll in that fox pool. And I thought, oh, Wilma loves people. So I actually pretended that I met someone. And the way I did that was to say loud, not to Wilma. I was... She, she was far, not far away, but I couldn't reach her. She was maybe 10 meters away, something like that. Um, so she could see me if she wanted. And she saw that I was not turning towards her because now I was trying to kind of lure her. And I managed <laughs> to do that because I, I said very loudly, um, ex a bit exaggerated, I have to say, I said, oh, hi what are you doing here how nice to see you and the way I said that how nice to see you she came running down to me because now she's like oh are there people here I want to greet some people and I thought that worked really really well of course the thing is it would not work if you kept doing the same thing over and over again because they're not stupid so if you do it twice or three times, you know, by then, by the third time, Wilma would think, oh, I'm not falling for that again. So this is what I called an uh, emergency. For, for me at that moment, that was kind of an emergency, not a, a dangerous uh, situation, of course, luckily. Uh, but it was kind of an emergency for me because I didn't want her to roll in that fox poo. So it's all about thinking what can you do to get your dog's attention? What is more rewarding for your dog than what he or she is doing at the moment when you want them to come to you, okay? And then the last um, little story I have today, again, I, I do walk a lot in the forest, I have to admit. <laughs> um, so, that's the time I really appreciated that I had learned a lot about using how to use my body language and to be very um, clear about my body language. Because I have, when I walk my dogs in the, in the woods and they're not on leash, I don't necessarily practice recall with, you know, my voice. I also practice with just my body by changing my direction or turning around and walking back so that the dogs I kind of train the dogs to keep an eye on me like I am keeping an eye on them when they're off leash uh, they need to keep an eye on me because they want to to follow where you go they don't want to lose us and the very that time one time that I was very very happy that I've done that for so many years and all of the five dogs knew exactly how I was doing that so they they did keep an eye on me and I had five dogs and I remember it quite well because uh, yeah you'll hear why um, it was a really nice uh, day in the fall like it is now and I walked my dogs in the forest not far away from the house we didn't get very far from the house and they were all off leash and then you see, I actually, uh, I'm going to laugh a bit now, don't, don't worry, <laughs> but I got a heart attack. Seriously, I did get a heart attack and I knew it was a heart attack because I've had it before. So I was alone in the woods and I didn't have my mobile. 
I know I should have. Everyone tells me I should have. So, yeah. Um, I didn't have my mobile, but I wasn't far away from my house. But I felt, I knew it was a heart attack. And I, and it comes very sudden. It happened very sudden. It's really, uh, you know, I maybe I was five minutes from home. Luckily, five minutes from home. So I then didn't have the breath. Seriously, it, it was a heart attack. So it was very painful. And I didn't have the breath to start it. Uh, talking even so I was so happy that I could just turn around and walk and hopefully my dogs would would come with me which they did and I the thing is that I was now walking as slow as I've ever done in my life because I was a little bit worried about fainting or something I thought you know what's happening if this gets worse now do I faint what happens um, so I was walking literally step by step, moving one foot like this and the other one like this, you know, very, very slowly uh, because I didn't have the breath for it and uh, it was very painful. Uh, you can also feel it in your arm, in your mouth. It's this very classical heart attack thing. And because I had a heart attack before, three, two or three years earlier, I knew it. So I managed to get myself home with all the dogs off leash um, without saying anything to them. I just used my body language and uh, when I turned around, I did the attention sound, hoping that, you know, they would hear it. And when there's more than one dog, if one dog is coming after you, the other one will too, because they want to be together. Uh, so... Um, yeah, and I managed to get myself home. Very, very happy about that. So I then I, I called the ambulance, obviously, and asked, asked them to pick, pick me up. I was actually very cool at the time. I called and I said my name, you know, my my personal, I don't know what you call it, uh, security number like, uh, and, and the address. And I said, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> I think you need to come and pick me up. Um. I have one more story that illustrates the this, um, but it's it's really not nice because it involves one of my dogs. Uh, he he actually broke his leg when we were out walking again in the woods, and this is many many years ago, maybe 15, 16 years ago. I only had um, four dogs, um, and. Uh, he broke, it was an Italian greyhound, so you know the, the legs are very, very thin. And I could just hear the way he, he slipped on a rock, it was a little bit wet, and he broke it like whoosh. And of course he was in pain, talking about pain, you know, and talking about aggressive behaviour. Of course I picked him up to carry him home, the leg was just hanging, dingling there, it was horrible, horrible. Um, and he was biting and doing, I'm just very happy. He was a small dog, so I was able to pick him up and walk home. Um, but again, I used the contact sound. I didn't want to start upsetting. He was screaming, the dog was screaming, the dog was in pain. The other one got worried, you know, everyone was a bit stressed out. So I carried the dog and what I did then, I turned around. Again, not very far from the house, but, you know, uh, too far. <laughs> And I actually had to walk next to a road or on a road with cars, not a very busy road, but still a road with 80 kilometers, you know, speed limit. So, uh, shit, that's what I thought. And you know what I did? I walked in the middle of the road. I thought this is my only chance because now I have to carry my very, uh, my dog that is in a lot of pain, obviously, because his leg has, is broken. So I couldn't really move a lot. I tried to keep still holding him while I was walking. And then I've, I couldn't put my other dogs on leash. So then I walked in the middle of the road so that people could see, the cars could see that, you know, they had to slow down because I didn't want to leash my other dogs. And the other dogs, it's very, very, it's not surprising, but it's, it's I don't know if it's the right word to say, 
uh, nice to see but it's it's uh, interesting to see how they adjust how they realize you know the situation as well so they were walking almost next to me you know they wanted to follow me home they didn't go crazy and run around on the road or something we walked there together all of us and the and the car stops the cars the few cars we met stopped and they saw that i was carrying this dog and it was in clear pain and uh yeah the there were some nice people rolling down the window asking if I needed help and so on. So, um, yeah. And again, it's the body language, it's the attention sound. It's all on how we react in the situation. So, that was my story. So I didn't plan to take the, and it's not a nice way to end the, the last story. It ended well. He was, you know, he got his leg fixed and it healed again and, and all of that. So... But it was kind of very painful, poor thing, when it happened. Okay, so that was my stories about the attention sound and the recall. Do I use recall a lot? No, when I think about it, no, because I use my body language. And I turn around, I would say, come, you know, I would... Kind of like I do with, you know, if I was walking with a friend, I would say, hey, I'm going to the left, are you coming with me? You know, that kind of thing. That's the conversation I have with my dogs when I go in the forest and they're off leash. Of course, we have to be responsible dog owners and you have to, um, you have to, oh yeah, that's, that's the thing. I have uh, one of my dogs, uh, she was... I mean, she didn't run away from home or anything. She just had a very, she was very independent and she was very confident. So for her, it was not a problem to go, you know, far ahead uh, from us, from the rest of us. Um, and I want to keep an eye on where they are because we can meet other people. We can meet moose, we can meet, I don't know, you know. Uh, other dog and other dog owners I normally don't walk where I meet a lot of other dog owners um, and I live in Norway so hey come on <laughs> um, but uh, yeah I always have a kind of a limit to where I want them to you know out of my eyesight so if you're walking on a field it could be very very far so in those instances I would call her back or ask her to wait but I never trained it I never, I never, she, she didn't know the key weight or something. It just came more natural. I, I was just talking, hey, hold on a little bit. Or, you know, whistling, <whistles> stop, you know, we're coming, don't run too far. <laughs> and when they get the attention from you, uh, you kind of have a communication going on. She came back, you know, uh, and wanted to walk with us instead. She's like, oh, you're all there, you know. <laughs> So, um, all of these things are just, I think uh, what I want to say, what I need, what I mean is that we shouldn't stress too much about things. We don't, with teaching cues and commands, you know, of course, I, um, teaching a recall is for safety as well. So, uh, you should definitely do that. Um, but then again, there are so many different things that can happen. Like I just told you a few examples. And then you use different things in different situations. So it could be a recall. Um, it could be something new, like you're pretending to meet someone because you want to find something that is more exciting for your dog than a recall. Uh, or you know uh, for him to come back to you because what he's doing is more exciting um, and um, or, or just the attention sound if you pay attention to the environment it's easier for you to give the attention sound before anything uh, happens so you don't even get to the part where you have the problem okay so thank you very much for listening, for your patience. I hope it was useful. Bye.